Identity, the Quest for Israel's Future, Emmanuel Shachaf, the author of the book. Hello to you. Hello, hello. Identity. Let's talk a bit about the present and the future. First of all, some good news about the Arabic version of the book. Yes, the Arabic version. The book has been translated into Arabic and will be published in Arabic uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. That's so I'm looking forward to that. That's great news because... Obviously, it opens new uh, no, 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 aud- a new audience. Uh, they could have read it in English, but uh, obviously Arabic makes it more accessible. The main message that you would like that the Arab readers within Israel or maybe uh, elsewhere would take with them into their heart from the book? The, the main message is, uh, as always, that uh, our future is together, not separate. And uh, uh, we have to get our uh, the state of Israel uh, make it into a multicultural uh, citizen state that will accommodate everybody in all the different cultures and all the different languages and all the different uh, people and we're talking while well, you're talking about variety of diversity of cultures for instance we're talking uh, in the news right now in Israel 2022 about the Ukraine refugees yes they, will they be a part or not yeah. or hell or somewhere first of all we have to let them in okay it starts with that and we can't stand there and say well this guy is a Jew and this guy is not Jew I mean this is this is a kind of uh, uh, selection which is you know is abominable and and we we fought against it and we uh, think and now now we're doing it this is this is you know just the thought is ridiculous and even the Supreme Court had a few words with the, with the government and said, what are you basing your, uh, the, 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 the mm-hmm. quotas on, okay? There's, there's no basis for quotas. There's just no base, okay? It's not that we know that there are 500,000 going to come our way and we have to limit that. We don't know. So as long as we don't know, the question is what to base it on. And the state obviously has so, so far selected some racist criteria. Uh, uh, and it, this won't stand, even in, as the situation is now. But it, it has to, you know, we have to be aware of the fact that we are either going to be an ethnocentric Jewish state, or we will be a citizen state for all citizens. And if if we don't find the way to to move there, or to uh, to make sure that we live up to what is re- what we wrote in our Declaration of Independence, then we don't have a future here. You know. People are listening to what you're saying, and they're saying, well, the minister of Shaked, she's practically fighting to keep the Jewish Israeli state and to prevent from thousands of Ukrainians and maybe let's talk about Palestinians, refugees, to be a, a, a real part, an equal part in the state of Israel because it was declared as the Jewish state. What would you recommend? There's no contradiction between uh, this being a Jewish state and accepting 100,000 refugees from Ukraine. Okay, there's just no contradiction. And uh, uh, the the reason, or the 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 way the the government and the Minister of Interior especially is dealing with this is, is the most overtly racist way that you can only imagine and it, it cannot continue like that we will lose support and we deserve to lose support from all those who support us if we continue along this way because you're saying that if we're going to continue with this kind of treatment what kind of future will we have well first of all there will be separation within within Israel we have a 20% arab minority and if we continue along this straight, this this Arab minority will will separate. Will try to separate. Will try to become of the, the struggle, be part of the struggle. If we don't can we can't have them all join us and and become part of the state of Israel uh, in an equitable way. Not only those, but also those under our our sovereignty in the West Bank. Um, we we're just going to look forward to a, a, a never-ending struggle. And uh, I don't think the Jews who come, who want to come here, uh, are willing uh, are willing to to come here if this is what they have to look forward to. You were talking about diversity. We had uh, this week a uh, this funeral. Yes. About uh, uh, Rabbi Kanievsky and half a millions of Jewish, extremely orthodox. They came yes. to respect their leader. Yes. And 
we can see another way of when you're talking about, or when we are talking about the Jewish state, there are many, many colors yes, within have, the Jewish we have, community. We have, we have colors in the Jewish community, we have colors in the uh, Palestinian community, we have colors in the Arab community. There, there are all kinds of colors, and they can only be accommodated in an equitable way in the citizen state. They can't be accommodated in a state which is reserved for the Jews. Uh, and that uh, we have to deal with, and we have to deal with it as quick as we can because the situation is getting problematic. And when uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, is trying to create a white, big Russian on top, on the head of Ukraine, not respecting their identity, you are seeing any kind of similarity? Yes, it's an ethnocentric state, uh, and, and this is what we are presently uh, also doing. We're, we're trying to uh, uh, propagate an ethnocentric state, uh, and this is, doesn't have a good end, okay? It doesn't have a good end. It's not... It's sanctions. Not, this san sanctions will be, uh, op uh, as they have been operated against uh, Russia, eventually the international community will realize that that works very well, and they'll also uh, operate them against Israel. And uh, that's not only the only reason we have to work against this kind of uh, uh, system. Uh, it's just not what, what it says in the Declaration of Independence. So we, we better live, to, uh, live up to our, what we have to live up to, and what it says in the Declaration of Independence, which means it's a state which is an equal, of equal for all citizens. And uh, let's talk a bit about the land. There, was a, there is a, an Arabic city called Taibe around half an hour from Tel Aviv, in the center of Israel, few families were declared that they have no rights over their land. Yeah, it's a, seven, there's a piece of land, seven and a half acres, which, uh, which happened to be, out, uh, the, the, the owners happened to be outside the state of Israel for several weeks in, during the War of Independence, outside the, the borders of the state of Israel. And therefore, they fell under the absentee properties law, which permits the state to nationalize territories which is owned by people who were outside the state of Israel any, for any period uh, uh, at all. And so uh, this uh, property was taken away from them for, uh, uh, by, by, by law, by the Supreme Court. Uh, which amazing. is really, which is which is really ridiculous under the circumstances. Okay, as is, um, uh, Arabs uh, don't have as much land as proportionally in, to their size in Israel as as Jews, and now they're even taking away that one because of a fluke of circumstances. So, uh, if we continue on this uh, line of thinking of that, that it's it's us, the Jews, against the rest, uh, we're not going to get anywhere, any uh, anywhere good in any case. And uh, there's another example of being together or, or living one against each other, which happened in the city of Rat in the southern part of Israel. Yes, we, ha we, we had uh, a very unfortunate uh, uh, death as uh, undercover cop, uh, co cops who were operating under in Arab disguise uh, shot an, uh, an Arab who actually ha who he had a gun. But it doesn't make a difference. The circumstances don't make a difference. The fact is that uh, the Israeli police uh, operates uh, undercover uh, cops, Arab undercover cops, which are used usually in the West Bank against Palestinians, also in, um, in, in, state of inside, in the state of Israel, is very, very problematic and will increase the friction between the Arab population and the Jewish population. And we, we, we just can't keep on going that way. You so. know, th these two last events that uh, Emmanuel, you were talking about, are events that uh, the media a bit covered. But maybe th we, we should estimate that lots of what is happening within the yes, occupied we don't territories... Know. We, we, we don't know. One of the problems is, and this is, I mean, we look at what happens in Russia, and there, there's real censorship. There's censorship here too, but uh, most of the censorship, censorship here is purely voluntary. Okay, the, the media don't report what's going on in the territories, the media don't report much of what's going on in the Arab society, uh, and as a, as a result of that, we reach the wrong conclusions, we as the public reach the wrong conclusions about what's really going on, and also the government sometimes, or, and the members of Knesset, don't actually act upon what's really happening, but only what's being reported, and that is not complete and not accurate, and we have to change that. So let's... Uh conclude our conversation looking about the present and the coming future. 
with your perspective, what do you see as the end game, the coming future? The end game is as soon as possible to go into, uh, to, uh, to reform Israel as a citizen state, as a federation in our case, in order to clear up all those issues which need clearing up and need to make, uh, we need to make sure that we are all equal in front of the law under Israeli sovereignty, like it uh, says in our Declaration of Independence. Identity, the quest for Israel's future, Immanuel Shachov report. Um, people that want to be part of the community? Facebook, quest, uh, Identity, the quest for Israel's future, or the Federation Movement, or Emmanuel Shachov. I want to thank you very much. Thank you.